And this is episode 16 of the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Podcast. And my next guest is Hollis Carter, and he's going to share how to become an Amazon bestselling author and how to position yourself for authority in your niche by becoming a published bestselling author. Welcome to the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Gilbertson, and I'm an author, speaker, and a coach to teaching you how to launch your own successful podcast. And the reason I designed this show is to bring you the top lifestyle entrepreneur experts from all over the world for them to share their key strategies that they've used to launch their own businesses and allow them to live life on their own terms. So tune in every Friday for new episodes and come on over and join the Lifestyle Entrepreneur community at www.lifestyleacademy.com. There you're going to receive VIP training from specific guests from the podcast, along with being able to watch all of the interviews. And I'll also be making it really easy for you to implement these strategies that you're hearing by sending you what I like to call the lifestyle cliff notes on the best of the best lessons learned on the podcast. So let's get started. All right. So before we get started with the show, I just want to thank everyone who is subscribing and leaving awesome reviews in iTunes. I'm so excited that people are enjoying these interviews and I'm excited to announce first Fridays. So what I'm going to be doing the first Friday of every month, we're going to have a raffle for ever, for those of you that have subscribed to the podcast and then also left a review and it'll be a raffle for $25 gift cards from iTunes, Amazon, eBay, all over the place. So all you simply need to do is just subscribe to the podcast in iTunes and then leave us a review and your name will go on ahead and we'll announce that the first Friday of every month. And here's another shout out. This is from CatCam3 and it says left wanting more. I just listened to the first four episodes on a drive to upstate New York and was left wanting more. Chris's skills at entertaining puts her guests instantly at ease and she has a way of asking all the right questions so that each episode is full of actionable advice. Definitely one you don't want to miss. Well, CatCam3, you are awesome. Thank you so much for taking time and tuning in on your drive upstate New York. So glad that you enjoyed it. I'm so excited for you to tune in for more episodes to help you in your business. So now for the show. I'm so excited because Hollis Carter is the gentleman that I'm about to interview, and he has literally created a lifestyle for himself that most people dream of. Um, He's not even in his 30s yet, and he lives here in Colorado, and for the most part, he skis. He skis about 100 to 140 days a year, depending on the snow here. Um, He rock climbs, he sails, he mountain bikes, and then he has a few businesses on the side. (laughs) And it's really cool because he's created literally multiple extremely successful companies. Um, Just to mention a few, he's created Social Networking Empire where he helps entrepreneurs create their own social networking site to grow their presence. He's also the founder of the HD Consulting Group that helps entrepreneurs in all areas of internet marketing. Created Video Sharing Empire, Daily Deal Deal Builder, and that's just to name a few. So he's truly created the lifestyle business of his dreams and he's gone from running a hugely profitable software company, literally in the seven figures, and now he's recently transitioned into the Amazon Kindle world and the digital publishing space. I mean, his current company he's focusing on, Velocity Publishing, helps authors take their message global and, and helps them with a simple process to help them get published. He's also created the perfect publishing system to help anybody be able to get that first book out of them. So without further ado, I'm so excited. I um, welcome Hollis Carter to the call. So how are you doing today, Hollis? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me and for that great introduction there. Um, <laughs> good to be here. Excellent. Well, I'm really excited to have you. So I'd love for you just to share what, because I mean, you really have done just some amazing things and you're in a lot of different niches. And I'd love for you just to start, you know, share with us how you got introduced to internet marketing and got into that community. Uh, Yeah, actually I was in college about to graduate and there was an ad in the paper for an internship where you could make up to six figures doing phone sales and I ended up being in this guy's office who had, he was doing some internet marketing and stuff. It was really interesting to kind of see what he was doing. I was just kind of helping him sell this workshop where he taught internet marketing. And so by the time I got done with that internship, it was just a few months, I had a good idea of how to apply some of those things to some other discussion. So what we ended up doing um, is me and my business partner at the time, was, uh, one of my, my college roommates, we 
saved up some money and built a social networking site for K-12 schools. This was right when Facebook came out and we knew it was going to be a pretty uh, big thing that was really changing the whole environment. So we, we made this whole thing and drove around to schools in suits and ties selling schools and it was hot and we were in Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, didn't want to keep driving around selling face to face. So what we decided to do was take our idea of internet marketing and what we knew at the time and apply that. So I made like a 30 minute video explaining how we did this and put it on the internet and set up an affiliate program. Just, I mean, I've never even built a website. It was very interesting building all these things and, and doing this um, you know, over the course of a few beers at night. And then we, we set it up and woke up in the morning and we had sales already. We were like, wow, this actually worked. And then that grew over the next few years to quite a few different products. And um, then I found the, the whole shiny object syndrome hitting me. Um, there's so many people wanting to get into different opportunities and do stuff. And I actually went on a, um, a heli skiing trip into British Columbia um, last March. And on my way back, I <laughs> read the book The Alchemist. And when I, when I landed, I decided uh, I was going to get rid of all the shiny objects um, and kind of decided just to focus on doing one thing and doing it really well. Um, and that was something that I saw to be a really big change, and that is this whole digital publishing thing. Um, you know, I got my Kindle, and I wasn't a big reader, and then I started reading a lot and, and growing a lot of new ideas and things I could take action. I'm carrying a whole library with me on my travel. And then I found out about how these, basically publishing companies actually worked where they were giving authors almost no cut of the money um, and not really doing much for them. And then now they're all getting sued by the Department of Justice too. So a lot of things lined up. I was like, I think we could come in here and really help get some really good messages from authors out quickly. Um, so me and my partner on this kind of basically put on our own little chemistry experiment in the Amazon place and it worked. Um, first book that we launched together, we did about 20,000 sales in the first, uh, I believe, 14 days. Um, so it was, uh, it, it was pretty cool. We hit number 10 on all of Amazon's for paid books. Um, and so the experiment worked, and then that kind of spiraled into two new businesses, um, one being our publishing company where we actually take authors who are already out there and, and build out their funnels and really help increase their exposure and then um, the other one, the perfect publishing system, we kind of developed a way where it really means a lot to be able to call yourself a best-selling author. And it speaks volumes. You've always heard like, you know, a book is the best business card. Well, it's like that, but saying you're a number one best-selling author just speaks volumes. It might take you a lot of time to actually get through and, you know, actually implement when you're having to prove your, your you know, prove your credibility or your street credit, uh, where you just say, I'm a number one best-selling author, and it kind of does the walking and talking for you. So we've been able to take a lot of people, whether they've written a book before or not, um, but kind of following the systems we've figured out and, uh, and get them to do that as well. And that's kind of our main focus right now is uh, just getting the best information out to the people and making uh, a lot of best-selling authors while we're at it. That is awesome. I mean, and those are some massive numbers. I mean, to, to hit that, I mean, just with your first launch with that, that's so exciting. So where do you see right now with the digital space? Because there's a lot of people talking right now, um, you know, you've got to get an iTunes, you've got to get an Amazon, you've got to get your message out there with these big distribution channels. Do you see a bigger trend with this digital publishing world um, for, for everyone in different industries? Yeah, it's uh, huge. I think it's because for so long, a book has had this value and the, it's been placed on it because of the only way it was distributed through, you know, bookstores and traditional models and the printing press. But now, uh, a lot of those numbers can be reduced. We can get more people are, you know, we're in the information age. We're getting a lot of information. Now that we've got, you know, the Amazon platform with 300 million people with their credit card on file to buy these books, um, you know, that being the biggest one, then you've got the Nook and iBooks, all these different areas in which people can go get this information rapidly and repeatedly. Uh, it works really well. And I think if people aren't tapping into that platform, they're missing out on one of the biggest areas. I actually kind of view Amazon as Google in the way I used to when I would go run, say, like a Google ad or something like that to try to get traffic to a website or, you know, a business. Now I can do that with my books and do it way more efficiently. Instead of spending money on Google, I'm actually getting paid by Amazon to get these leads 
that's kind of the uh, the secret sauce behind um, the model that we've really implemented. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, that makes so much sense. It's like you already have, I mean, there's so many people already on Amazon, already looking for people, used to already spending their money, and then you put your book in there, that's your, your, your advertising. It's just driving traffic a different way. So I, I know you've cracked the code, but can you share some of the just kind of the basic ideas of what it takes to get into Amazon and how you help entrepreneurs do that? Yeah. Um, so, and, and this is one of the things I'm not going to uh, why it's you know, one of those <laughs> get rich quick kind of things because that's really not what this we figure out is it does take some work. Like I mean, our right. course I believe eight, it takes about eight weeks to go through it. Um, a lot of people only end up doing a small amount of it. We've had someone, one of our students actually, who had never even published a book. She hit number four on Amazon. It was a Hunger Games, Hunger Games, Hunger Games, and then her Dinners for Two book, and she had never done a book no or anything. Way. They hadn't even gone through the whole course. Um, and a lot of it's the live forum and stuff where people exchange information, and they end up learning things that we don't even know existed because we're all kind of working at the same goals. Um, right. We do put a fair amount of time into it, but the stuff that really works quickly and easily to make it happen that I think a lot of the other people miss is the stuff we learned from doing the direct response internet marketing stuff, and that is testing. Like We actually go out and we test different covers. Instead of just saying, oh, this is a pretty book cover, that's one we're going to use, we'll go out and um, put a little budget on a few ads and we'll run some ads and see which ones actually get clicks because that's essentially what they are inside the Amazon environment. Then, you know, we'll, we'll crowdsource out and find out how to, you know, what's the title that appeals to people the most and we'll test that. Test all the frontal things so that when we actually do go into a promotional phase, we know that it works and it's what people want. It's not just our assumption of what people want. And um, right. that's one of the more beneficial things is just testing these elements and getting it done and figuring out methods to do it really efficiently without spending a lot of cash uh, when you're in the initial phases. But compared to a traditional publishing where you have to print a book and then put it on a shelf and see how it does, it's a lot more sense. Um, and then the other really, really big thing is social proof. Um, people really want to know that they're not the only one buying this book and leaving a review and that kind of thing. So. Um, this is kind of a cool statistic. The last book we launched, oh, just under 10 of people left an actual re review on the site, which is really, really rare. I can actually pull this up a bit. Kind of see how many reviews we have at the moment. Um, so we launched this book about two weeks ago. Um, and this is, I actually got called by Amazon wanting to know how we did this um, because we had this reviews in production to the amount of purchases. They've ever seen. So right now we've got a six star rating with a 1,900 customer reviews. Oh my goodness! Uh, so that is and, and that wow. was that was fully manufactured. Um, you know, because we thought about we really need people to give us a review and tell us what to think about it. So within the book, we built kind of an incentive system for people to leave reviews, whether they're good or bad, um, where we give them a little something extra to do that. And, and show them exactly how. So I thought we can be up, you know, for around uh, 1,900 reviews right now. Actually, 1,900 on the back. So. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Now, do you teach that in your course, that strategy, to help other authors do that as well? Yeah, yeah that's one of the main ways we drive uh, people up the charts is because, you know, Amazon has its own voting system essentially, and that's actual sales, customer reviews, and there's a combination of things that make up how they rank the books, and it changes by the hour, which is oh, why wow. I really like it because it's a very truthful system of ranking where when you follow the rules, you can do really, really well, whereas with some of the other bestseller lists, they're kind of political, and it's like, you know, who knows who gets their name in the right spot, where this is based on a set of specific numbers, sales, reviews, so on and so forth. And um, we figured out how to do that with free books, paid books, all the different angles. Um, and the, the reason we actually made the course is my partner, uh, Johnny Andrews, he had a, a young daughter, and uh, she came out premature and ended up having to figure out how to make $30,000 really quickly to pay for this crazy surgery. And, you know, he had the talent of writing, so he started kicking out books and figured out how to make this a way to supplement that. Um, but he went and found a bunch of different courses that he found through Google and stuff on how to, you know, do well on Amazon. And... Mm -hmm. They ended up getting him banned because they taught him techniques that Amazon doesn't allow. 
And um, that's one thing to really keep in mind when playing in the Amazon world. It's all based on trust. And you have to produce really good content and um, really don't, it, it's not a place for sneaky marketing tactics. Uh, it's a right. place for strategy, strategies that work well and provide value. Uh, most of the courses out there will teach you how to put 400 PLR books out that sell a few a month and you can maybe make you know $1,000 a month or something like that. Um, but the way we look at it is it's a lot easier to do one book really well and then release a series of books behind that platform instead of trying to do 450 crappy books. Um, right. So a lot of different methods and the desires are different too. Like, you know, I might have someone who says, you know, I have a chiropractor business and I'm just looking to beat my competition. How can I do that? I'm a real estate agent competing over houses and I can't do it. How can I do that? Like, well, if you're a best-selling author, you know, that would that give you that leverage you needed? And that's a quick way to do it. Some people do do it strictly for generating leads for their business because when they buy the book, you know, now it's one of their customers and they came in and they get to learn more about their personality and what they're doing. Um, and then, you know, that there's definitely a few different ways that we can use this just how we have in other markets, but I believe it's just so transparent in the world now that instead of, uh, I call it like the day of the free report is dead, you know, everyone in the whole world used to teach, you know, give away a free report on your website to build an email list and go, well, people are pretty much over that and they've seen it, so they're so immune to it. But now, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting 20,000 people to spend $4 on a book and then join the list. And so there's a lot of lot of ways that uh, that this has a lot of crossover into how people perceive the value and are delivered value, and uh, you can produce a very long-term, ongoing business. That's my favorite part about this is there's not. You know, I've done the whole internet marketing launch model, and you launch something, blow it up, and then you're dead again. You launch something, blow it up, and you're dead again. This just completely reoccurs, and you know, um, you know, we tell people we don't do this just you know on the idea of making money. It's more the benefits that come with publishing a book us in this way. Um, right. But the great thing about Amazon is, you know, after 60 days, you're getting a check every single month from them. Um, and it's a great company to work with. Now, for the new person getting started that's never written a book, do you suggest they do a free book first, or should they go straight for, you know, having a paid book on Amazon? Well, there, there's two very key things to know about that. Um, what we do is we call it pulsing, where we actually pulse, use free, for people who maybe don't have as much of a budget or their own platform to drive traffic um, as a way to get free traffic from Amazon. Now, free customers do something really great and also not so great. One thing is they help drive you up the list because they look at free downloads almost the same as paid ones when they're ranking you on the page. What we're trying to do is get but the same thing as being on the front page of Google. When Amazon recognizes your book is moving, they're going to say, people who like this, also like this, and put you on their home page and send emails out for you, and they're going to really work hard to help you sell more once you start selling. Um, but the perceived value of that is a little different. The customers we find aren't as high of a quality um, in that space as far as the amount of ones who are going to leave you a review and contact you and follow up and do more business. But if your only goal is to be a best-selling author, that's okay. Um, cause what we'll do is we'll generally do what we call a free pulse to get it up into a certain state, and then we'll switch it back over to a paid book, and okay. then we go through a series of other techniques to keep it there. And the whole idea is to find your buoyancy point, point in which you float in Amazon without spending any money, and they're going to be the ones driving the traffic and doing the promotion for you. So usually you can figure that out pretty quickly where you float. Like, you know, if we have a book that floats around – 200, we can usually with a pulse get it back up into the top 100, um, top 100, top 10 really fast, and then you kick it back down again, and you can uh, watch it float back and forth um, just by doing free pulse. You can put it in the Kindle Select program. Um, there's a lot of things, and the cool thing is very, very, like, I'm very computer illiterate, actually, and um, when I log into the Amazon Direct Publishing area, it's just a simple, easy platform to use. Um, and that's why I've been kind of excited. Like our best students right now are actually mostly like elderly women who just have cookbooks. Um, I sent really? my part yeah, who don't have you know computer skills. That's, that's kind of cool. I sent Johnny a text message suggestion like, I'm in Amazon right now, and 18 of the top 20 are of the, in cooking food and wine are our students. And that was like kind of cool to see, um, you know, the people that are doing that. So something uh, we always like enjoy that it's. It, people with real good content that can do it um, and, and want to share that with people, which I really like. 
Um, right. The other parents actually have people like the, there's a great example of the book, The Man Cave, is one of our students, which a lot of people have seen floating around on the Amazon platform quite a bit. That's actually written in the pen name Matt Thompson by one of the students who's a woman who just actually gets those books outsourced um, following some of the methods we show um, to do that but do quality and, and not spend an arm and a leg on it. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the resources you use and the verbiage you use, like for instance calling it a report, not a book, when you're getting the initial outline done can save you a lot of money just by changing the wording there. Um, oh, smart. <laughs> so you know it's been three years and playing around in here and learning and just getting back from New York, meeting with you know the head of Amazon Publishing and then Kindle Direct Publishing and Create Space and learning how it all works and how they're still evolving too, but their vision for it is, is beautiful and we're just trying to align ourselves as well as we can. Um, just so it can be a long-term, very beneficial partnership because they're the most trusted um, site to bring, or most trusted retailer in the world, um, which is a huge thing to be partnered with someone like that. Which kind of brings me to the other question you always get is like, you know, why don't you do Nook or iBooks, which we have done and we're not opposed to doing. But if I'm going to spend an hour a day working on a promotion, I'm going to do it where there's 300 million people um, compared to where there's a very, very small percentage of it. I think they have over... Um, I don't know what it is like at today, but over 50% of that whole market in one area. So if you can go there and their platform is something really good, I think the other ones will catch up and we'll move over there eventually. Um, but right now, um, as far as the whole minimum movement, maximum impact, uh, I just don't see um, that being a, a big desire for us at the moment. Perfect. Kit, are you able to share any just kind of the future of what Amazon, I mean, because that makes so much sense. That's like a perfect partnership, and Amazon is. It's just an amazing company. Um, but do you, like, any insights for kind of the future trends that you see happening? Yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of it having to do with, um, so you're kind of familiar with when you get in there, um, and, you know, I try to keep, say this briefly, as I said, the course actually is it's fairly in depth. Um, is like, you know, when you're talking about the recommended stuff, it's a huge mm -hmm. part of their algorithm. When you get in there, it's a custom page, you know, built around your buying habits in the past and the things you've done, the things you've clicked on, things you've ordered, stuff in your wish list. And so we really do spend a lot of time thinking about how we can best get our books recommended to the best customers. Um, so this is one of our big kind of theories slash you know, strong points we stick to in working in Amazon is always quality over quantity. So I'd much rather have 2,000 people buy my book and then, you know, join my email list, you know, through that book than 200,000 who just opted in for a free report somewhere right. else. Um, that quality is so, so good. Uh, it's going to go a really long way. Um, and a lot of this stuff can be applied to other stuff like music and, and different things in those industries. Um, you know, just, just operating within that platform. But with Amazon, it's all about trust. You can try different things, but you want to just ensure to be open and honest with them on what you're doing and, and that your intentions are clear when they see what you're doing. Um, if you go around and go buy a bunch of master resale rights books and post a ton of them up on there, they're going to know your only goal is to make some money. You're not trying to add value to their customers' lives. And right. that's what they're really looking for. And if they can see that, then they'll don't go run ads for you and spend their own money to help you out. Uh, that's kind of, you know, the way they work. So it, it's really that's good to so say that. That's amazing. I had no idea that they go that far with that. And really, I just, I love the ethics behind it. I'm, I'm so glad that you shared that because I think, I don't think a lot of people know that about Amazon, how it really works and, and just even the ranking system. That's really cool to know because then you really do know, like you really are in the top ten for the right reason. So that's, that's so exciting. Now, I've got a really silly question. So, you, okay, you focus on Kindle, but if you don't have a Kindle, can people still download? Because I'm not tech savvy at all. I mean, I teach technical stuff, but I'm not tech savvy either, so I'm just curious how that works. Yeah, and, and that's actually the very first part of our course. Like, that's the whole week of the course. And <laughs> everyone in the world, has pretty much, um, if they have a smartphone, an iPad, a computer, they have a Kindle. Um, all you have to do is download the free Kindle app. Basically, the kind of way I look at it is um, Amazon made the decision to come out with a physical product like the Kindle and then realize, right. crap, we're, they realize, crap, we are not Apple. We're Amazon. So we don't need right. to be doing that. 
their kind of way to come back around to it was, hey, we'll let all those Apple products and smartphones and Androids all become instant Kindles. So you download the free Kindle app, and now you're in that marketplace, and it's, it's easy to do. That's how we'll actually teach people on the Internet, hey, we've got this Kindle book. You can get it. Here's how to download the app. Here's how to do it. We'll walk them through it you know, with the email spikes and stuff we use so that we can get book sales from other environments. Um, by showing them that they could do that, um, which is cool because actually our statistics on the last book, over half the readers and purchases are actually coming from iPad, not Kindle. So, Really, that's really cool. I, I love that how technology, you don't have to have it to be able to get it. It's so cool. Now, do you have any suggestions on the best app for people to find those and for um, public, or, excuse me, authors to use for um, promoting yeah, their books? There's only, yeah, there's only one. Um, you just use the Amazon Kindle app. They made it. It was released by Amazon for free. Um, and and like you know, I have I have a Kindle. I also have an iPhone, I have an iPad, and a computer. Way too many devices. And um, the same Kindle app is on all of them. So all my books are there, no matter what. So if I'm, uh, you know, I was coming home from the Southern Bluegrass Festival yesterday, and I was like a, you know, significant little guy. I read it on my iPhone. Read my Kindle on my iPhone. Um, and it was there. So I also have it on my on my Kindle on my computer and it syncs all up uh, in your account with them. And if you're a Prime member, you know, you get uh, benefits of free books and stuff in there, which is another cool thing. I'll try not to there's a lot that you said about this. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes. you know, what they do is they actually pay the authors for those borrowed books. So you know if you're a Prime member, that select program you can lend books for free and, and borrow books. And they actually pay the authors out on those. Like I think we got about two dollars per borrow, and um, I can actually tell you how many borrows we did um, last month. Uh, you know, it's in the thousands of borrows, and, and that's just people getting the book for free. But Amazon's paying you out on that, which is really, really cool. You're kidding me. That's wait. Can you explain that a little bit more? So, what do you mean exactly by borrowing it? Okay, so um, let's just. See how many bars I have or something to give you a number. All right, so when you're a Prime member, um, you can go look at a book and you can borrow it. You can borrow it from one of your friends or from the, what they call their Kindle lending library. Um, so you get it for a period of time to read or whatever. It's absolutely free. Um, but the cool part is they don't cut the uh, publishers and authors out of it. They actually pay us at a different amount every month based on how many people are in the program. So last month there was a $600,000 pot that all the authors kind of split up, and that worked out to about $2 per book for borrows, um, which was a really cool thing to, uh, to see that all kind of unfold and work. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, this is so amazing. Yeah, so this month it looks like we had 1,545 people borrow the book, um, which means, you know, since this was a book in the health space, you know, someone who was like maybe sent it to someone to borrow or they found it in the lending library. So a lot of different ways to um, – and I don't actually focus ever on the $3.99 book being where we're making our money. It's more of really beneficial to get paid to have a new customer and a new person on our list. Because, um, you know, no one's gonna, I mean, you can make a significant amount of money selling $3 books. You sell a lot of them. Um, but at the same time, you always want to take a bigger picture, and that's what we try to really help people get that mindset to, to understand that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I just love this concept because that's exactly what I do with coaching my clients with podcasting. It's that bigger picture, that bigger idea of what you're providing value for and then how you can grow your list. I just, oh, my gosh, it's so exciting. This is just so cool. I had no idea how big, I mean, definitely with Amazon, what is in here for people to be able to do. And I'm curious, so I know you talked, is there like a certain price point, though, that you suggest for people to start with then? Like you have your free part, and then you, you know, put it back into paid. But like yeah. should it be under 10 bucks, or what do you suggest? Yeah, so there's, there's two things. There's agency pricing, which you're going to see that's your traditional publishers charging way too much. Um, for a digital book where people know it didn't cost them anything to print. That's why they're all being sued by the Department of Justice for price fixing. So we stay away from the agency pricing model. Um, and it comes back to testing again. Um, you're going to look at the different categories. We call it running up the flagpole or leveling up. If you go into you know, to Amazon's website, you'll see how it's broken down by different categories. Like I'll actually pull this up so I can 
read it off here so it makes sense to anyone listening. So I come to books. I'm going to go to books. You can see on the side there's different things. If I'm going to come here to nonfiction, which is one of the bigger categories, which I'm not number one anymore, but I was last week. Um, I'm number nine. Oh. But uh, anyway, that's so good. Um, <laughs> but you come in here and you'll see it's actually, it's actually broken down by other categories. So we'll start at the bottom. Um, like you could be cooking food and wine. Like I'll click on that. So that's one category. And within that, there's more of really these baking and pan So I'll get down to the smallest one, which I'm number one cooking food and wine, which is nice, um, and number five and six. Um, but and this is constantly changing, which is really cool. Let's say we came into cooking food and wine. Now, let's say it's just about baking. I can get down again and start comparing the other prices that exist in here and how that works. And I'll kind of measure that around. And then we'll actually just straight up test because in the KDB platform, you can change it on the fly and see what happens, basically. Um, it's a little different than where you're running your own sales page where you could maybe run a couple versions a 1,000 people and see what happens. Here you can change it and run it for a specific period of time. The traffic is pretty consistent, so you see what happens and you change it. But we found uh, 99 cents is this crazy impulse buy price point where you can drive a ton of sales. And really, you know, Apple figured that out with testing the, the apps, um, that 99 cents is that price point. Um, so far, our best price point, but this is also, you know, one that we executed really well after trying it a few times is three ninety nine. We've had success with six ninety nine. Um, you know, it, it, there really isn't a specific way I can do this in under an hour. Um, we map it out. There's kind of a pattern that we figure out how to follow. You start here, move here, pulse it there. But the main thing is that the price. It's where you sit on the bestseller list for Amazon. So that's exactly a direct component of how much traffic you're going to get. Ah, perfect. That's amazing. That's oh, oh, so exciting. Now, do you, because um, I'm in Amazon kind of messing around in here too right now, do you, what do you think about the Audible? Um, are you guys going to, do you have courses that teach people with audio books as well? We don't have a course at the moment. We show you how to do it. Uh, but this is kind of like our method. So publishing EDU is kind of the area which Velocity House is our publishing company where we get to, really play some cool experiments and play with authors who have very large email lists and access to PR stuff. And we get to play with a lot of traffic and figure out what works. So I'm actually in mm -hmm. conversation with uh, a few other Audible companies on exactly what's the best transition, how to transition to physical to get another boost of traffic and all that. And the way we normally do it is we'll kick our members from the perfect publishing system over at Publishing EDU. We'll say, hey, you know, we just ran this test for the last three weeks, and this is what happened. We, we made another module on how to go physical or you know, how to go near audiobook. And um, the amount of effort and everything falls on the minimum movement, maximum impact thing. So we kind of mm -hmm. run it through an equation first, like is it worth our time to do this to go audio and we're only going to get this many sales, and this is the end result versus putting more time into promoting more on our digital side. So. Uh, we kind of try to make sure everything fits that mold before we uh, release a course on it. Oh, that's so, I love it. Minimum movement for maximum output. I love it. You're like, we have an equation specifically for that. <laughs> well, that's so great. This is so amazing. So what, what, other, uh, what else can you share uh, with us about you know, what you're working on and how you're helping authors with Amazon? Uh, yeah, I mean, really the, the biggest thing is we kind of can target a specific outcome, whether that's they want a lot of publicity, they want to build a really big responsive platform or list, uh, they want to sell a ton of books. Um, and it's been really enjoyable to be able to dial that in and say, hey, this is what we want to achieve and this is how to do it. Like the last author, we've got our book, you know, out the wazoo on PR shows and interviews and stuff. and we have the, the fun ability of telling them all no right now um, and putting it off in, until we kind of set this arbitrage that we figured out. So her goal is wanting to be famous, so that was you know what we did with the book. Um, we've had other people who don't want to be in the limelight at all, but they want to build a big customer list. So we kind of angle it uh, based on the res desired outcome. It can, you can pretty much produce, produce the result you want. Uh, you know, obviously, results not typical. There's you know everything's different in every different industry. <laughs> And the way you go. 
Um, and that's a big, big thing is there's a huge difference between fiction and nonfiction. Both really fun. We play in both the spaces. Um, but that way you attack it is different. Obviously, the readers are they read for a different reason. And, uh, and the way you attack it is going to be different um, for each of those. So picking the market is huge. Obviously, uh, we've had a really good time in the health and cooking niche um, has been probably, I can say, the most profitable of everyone we've touched. We've also had personal finance, vampires, romantica, um, you know, you name it. So. Oh, that's, what about um, some of the other, like the real estate, finance, what about uh, like self-help, any suggestions on those niches at all? Or? These are great niches. Uh, kind of the top ones are going to be the ones that Inter like, so people are familiar with probably on you know this podcast on internet marketing, which we call the pinky nail of the arm of nonfiction. It's teeny, 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 teeny. Won't really sell very well. Whereas stuff that's more mass market, like uh, a personal development or self help book, does hugely well. Uh, cooking, food and wine, health and fitness, really good stuff. Real estate. Um, Gianni McCurry on this, he'd actually. Under his, uh, actually, you can see Johnny Andrews in there. He is, uh, his first test really worked well was his story of how he went from you know, homeless to um, doing really well um, with his online businesses. So he didn't teach internet marketing. He stole the story of what he did with the, the money to do that. And, and that worked really well um, for us in that space. And I was in personal finance. I remember being at an internet marketing event and Johnny was texting me pictures of, Himself sitting on top of Mark Kiyosaki and Rich Dad Poor Dad. I actually just went looking up. He's number one in in that category right now. So, um, and that sounds two ninety nine. So, that is just awesome. This is so exciting, and I'm just so glad that you guys have just paved the way and you've got it all figured out. It's it's so. Exciting. I mean, it sounds like all of your students are just rocking it in Amazon. So, my question is, how long does it take to get? Approve with Amazon and get set up. I mean, once you've got your your, you know, your manuscript and your book ready, they're gonna. So there's no. It's gonna be different for every single person. I'm gonna tell you that you will be the bottleneck far before Amazon will be. Um, trying to show you how to format the book and upload it and everything. That's pretty easy stuff. We've had it turn like it actually keeps getting faster and faster. When we first started. Sometimes it would take up to a week. Um, to get through the whole process, but <laughs> we did it the other day and we had the intention of it taking a week, and then we noticed that it was already alive like the next morning. Um, so they're really speeding up on their direct publishing system with the approval process and all the stuff that goes there. Um, and it's been, uh, been pretty cool to, to see the growth and all that. Um, so really it's about as fast as you can go. Wow. Now, in your course, do you then teach all your authors how to do? I know you said you've got you know the secret strategies to help people get ranked, but do you also teach them marketing and how to market this book out and, and all the other platforms as well? Uh, yeah, so we once again it's kind of the maximum or minimum movement, maximum impact. Like here's how you could do it if you want to go over to Nook uh, or, or you know the Barnes and Noble stuff, but there's really no point in doing it yet um, because there's just so many more eyeballs in this other spot that any time and effort you put in there is just not going to be worth it yet. Not to say that it won't be in the near future, but at this point in time, we recommend that you don't. Um, just for the amount, everyone only had, everybody is blessed with the same amount of hours every day, um, and we want to make sure we're using them the best we can. So. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Well, before we end here, do you have any other advice that you can share for our listeners on getting published with Amazon? Uh, yeah, just uh, the main, main one thing to remember, especially if you've been through any other courses or trainings or workshops that talk about this, is really know that there's a customer on the end of it. Like, you know, oh, cool, we sold 20,000 bucks. That's 20,000 real people. So mm -hmm. always know that there's someone real reading that book. And if you have that intention, Amazon will see that. They're going to help you out. I mean, we've literally seen Amazon blast their email list with some of the cookbooks. Um, because it was some good recipes that people were enjoying. So if you keep in mind that you're, you're dealing with real customers, not just numbers, um, you can see some, some really cool things happen for you. And it can happen really quickly um, wow. as long as you have really good intentions with what you're trying to do. That's so exciting. That just made me think of another question for you. So with your course and what you're teaching, do you help people because um, I know you were talking about how you've got some of your clients that are um, outsourcing, you know, having ghostwriters. But do you help them kind of in their book 
teach them how to turn those people then into to, you know, clients and take them from the book into their, you know, their sales funnel and, and bring them into their business. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and it's funny, that was our original intention. Of course, that was the only outcome we were trying to produce for people. And the people didn't even need to go any further because they just got so satisfied with book sales that they just kept it there. Um, but, you know, it, it's exactly what we pretty much show people how to do. Um, where to get the ghostwriters, how to filter through them and get the right one, um, and, and really dial in that, which I can tell you is a hell of a learning process, but you can get not only three years of mistakes and, <laughs> and trials and tribulations and money spent. Uh, you can just you know, take that and run with it and not have to do it yourself, which is kind of nice. So he's experienced all this stuff from being banned to uh, following that information and, and, and stuff. So it was, it's been a work in progress, and now uh, it's great to have the relationship we do. And I hope you enjoyed that episode. I'd love to get your feedback here for the Lifestylepreneur podcast right in iTunes. Simply leave us a five star and a review letting us know what you like, who you're interested in hearing more from, and what topics you really want help with in your business that I can bring on those key experts to really fine tune and help you in your business and creating the lifestyle of your dreams. And I'll be giving shout outs to make sure you put your name and your website address if you want me to share that with the community as well. And again, thanks for listening. I'm so excited that you found the Lifestyle Preneur podcast and I can't wait to connect with you and learn more about your business as we continue to grow this community. So again, have a great day and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Lifestylepreneur podcast. Again, I'm Chris Gilbertson, and I'm committed to bringing you top training from leading lifestylepreneurs all over the world to help you break through and turn your dreams into your ideal lifestyle. And make sure to join us at www.lifestyleacademy.com to receive VIP training from specific guests I interview on the show so that you can really easily start to implement what you've learned from listening. I know we're all busy and sometimes we don't have time to listen to the entire podcast or take notes because I'm always listening on the go. So I like to call it the lifestyle cliff notes to creating your ideal business and make it really simple for you. So those will be sent via the email list. Plus, I also want to connect with you personally, and being on the Lifestyle Academy mailing list is where all the magic happens. We'll host VIP trainings once a month that we can't always bring out on the podcast with even more detailed information. And I also want to connect with you personally. I want to know what's going on in your business and what you need help with and who I can bring on to aid you in creating your ideal lifestyle. And so I'll be asking questions every once in a while that I want you to reply, and I reply back to you personally. So again, until next time, wishing you on your way to achieving all of your dreams. Talk to you soon.